All right, so this is going to be a co-op strat for Call of the Dead. It's a variation of the 5 and 5 high kill power strat, but uh, you don't lose so much time doing it this way. Basically, 5 and 5's high kill power strat, you get like 36 kills per VR shot, but it's pretty slow. The, doing it this way, you're able to get about 36 kills per VR shot, but be at 20, 21, maybe 22 SVH at most. So... Uh, this is a pretty hard strat to explain, so I'm going to show you my perspective, what I'm doing, and everything that's important from my perspective, and then I'll switch to Eli's perspective and break it down the same way. Because there's a lot of coordination that goes on here, and you kind of got to understand how all the moving pieces work. So basically, to start off with, you both want to be on this side of the power room. This is the, the right side, like if the stairs are right behind us. The reason you want to be here is because the window that's behind over here, you want them to pull this way. You don't want them to be flooding you from the left side because Eli needs a way out. <clears throat> so to start the horde up, he, what he's going to do is he's going to go out the other side. I'm going to come here, pull these zombies, and just slowly start walking them through the power room. Eli's going to be doing something over there. I'll explain that later. But you're just going to slowly walk through the power room like this. And then basically, you want to be merging right here. So Eli's about to come around this corner at about, like right now is when it would be good. And then we're both going to run together along the rail. And then run back and shoot. So when he shoots, it is very important that me... So once I shoot him, he is completely... Uh... Like, the zombies won't target him at all, so wherever I am standing, the zombies will go to. So I need to stay on this side of the power room at all times, so that way zombies do not pull from this left side. So Eli is going to go shoot in this window over here. I'll show you guys what it looks like from his perspective later. And then he's going to shoot, come over here and shoot a grenade out this door. This is where you're getting the majority of your kills. This nade and the extra kills in the window. And then it basically just repeats. So... You'll go, like normal, just walk out this side. And it's very important that he puts a board on this window on his way out, because uh, I need to be able to get through this door. And then it's basically just the same thing from here. Now, something I'm not sure about here, this is something I haven't tested too much. I'm not sure if it is exactly better for the white player or blue player to run in front. It, normally in Zombies, you want the blue player in front at all times, but... It felt like the strat was honestly going a lot better when I was running in front. Uh, we start doing that a little bit throughout the footage, so if you watch the full round, you'll, you'll start to see that. But I, I honestly really have no idea. I think more testing could prove whether or not that's the case. But it may be better for the white player to run in front. Early on in the gameplay, I was always trying to let him run in front because I felt it was better, but I might be wrong. So yeah, I try letting him run in front here. And the problem is, that when he get runs in front, I would get stuck sometimes. And when I was running in front, he wasn't really getting stuck. But that's pretty much it from my perspective. There isn't really too much complicated about it. Something you can do, like what I did right here, is I, after he shoots the horde, I go to his corner for a second just to see if any didn't die. And if a zombie, you, you'd see this in the full round gameplay too. If there's any zombies that didn't die, you just want to stall them right here at the door. And then when Eli comes over here to grenade launcher him, he, he would shoot these guys with the M16, pull out the nade launcher, and then shoot. So that's it from my perspective. I'm going to go ahead and open up Eli's perspective now and break down uh, how that works. I should have uh, had this laid out already. Okay, there we go. That works. <clears throat> so yeah notice that you always want to have this window basically on full boards or as close to four bo full boards you can get as all times and same thing you want to start on this side of the room like always and basically at the start of the round as soon as this window is about to fully breach you need to run over there to get a board on it like, you don't want to just let it breach. You need to make sure you get a board on it. So that's what he does. When he realizes it's going to breach, he gets a board on it. And then he's going to run out over here. So I'm not sure exactly what he's doing here. Basically, he just kind of does a little cut there. He pulls him along the rail, comes along the wall, and meets me here. It's basically just one cut. 
is all it is. But the important thing is that he is meeting me when we're right about exactly as far distance apart as we are. He probably wants to come a little bit deeper along this wall, so that way we have more room on the rail. Because, like, yeah, he, he barely comes towards me at all, so we're a little bit tight on the rail here. But that's basically the gist of it, is, like, you basically just need to be giving yourself as much room to get along this rail as possible. So now, when he shoots, it is very important to look at the timer. I mean, obviously, you wouldn't have these timers in a real game, but you would have your own, you know, manual timer, W split, whatever. I shot him at 23. So he has 10 seconds to do what he needs to do. I'm not sure exactly how he was timing this, but basically he's going to shoot the horde here. He has to get his second nade off before 33. So he's going to shoot here with the regular M16 in the window while boarding it. It is very important that he's boarding this window while shooting. And then he it looks like he was timing it about after five seconds of shooting in the window. He comes over here and shoots the nade. That's probably a good timing, because you definitely do not want to be missing this nade. It is much better to be early on the nade than late, because the nade is where your, the majority of your kills come from. Like, So that's what the most important thing is. So now, to line up this nade, it's kind of hard to see. Fuck. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see with the VR. But basically, the way you want to line... This is probably a little bit too low. You, these two horizontal lines of the M16 grenade launcher, you want to line them up basically with the top of this barrel. I guess it's okay if it's a little bit lower. But th that's basically how you want to be lining this up. I, I, I don't know how much left or right you want to be looking. You can experiment that with yourself. But the main thing is that you have these two horizontal lines at least close to the top of this. And he had more than enough time to get this off. You don't really want to be cutting this too close. But he would just shoot another grenade launcher, and then it'd be the same thing. He realizes the window needs a board. And this is an important point here. It, it, it is important to note that Eli is blue player here, and a zombie just breached the window. If he full sprinted to his side right now, this zombie behind him would pull towards me and get me trapped in the power room. So what he wants to be doing is walking very slowly over to his side, so that way this zombie comes with him. Because it, it doesn't matter how many zombies he's pulling from the stairs there. All that matters is that we both meet each other here safely. That It does not matter how many zombies I pull from the stairs. It just matters that I'm able to get out of the power room and he's able to meet me here in time. So same thing, we just meet right here. This is probably as, as scuffed as you want it to get. I mean, this zombie is kind of ruining everything right here. Um, we're going to barely have any room on the rail because we weren't able to go that deep. But still, even then, he got through just fine, and I'm probably, I assume I get through here? Yeah. The, the key thing is, is that, the reason I feel like it's better for the blue player to be in front is because the blue player has the bow, so if anything does go wrong, I just down, and that's okay. He can get the revive with the bow, you know? If the white player is in front, like, and the blue player downs, it can get more sketchy. But like I said, you could experiment more with that. But other than that, it's basically just this over and over again. Um, shooting in the window. You want to be timing it. Come over here, shoot the nade, and that's it. So now I'm going to show you how Eli buys ammo. So basically, it, it, um, an interesting note to, for ammo here, you always want to have two nades left over. You never want to be doing the strat when you only have one nade. So when you have three nades, it is the exact same thing as having two nades, basically, because you're only going to have one or zero left over, which neither of those can work. So if you have three, you will kill this horde in by ammo. If you have two, you will kill this horde in by ammo. So that's an important thing to note. So for Eli buying ammo, it's basically, it's the same thing for killing, at least. He'll shoot the horde. He'll come shoot in this window. Then he'll shoot the nade launcher. He missed, but uh, it's okay. And by the way, if the nade launcher fails, um, I, I will still try to force my way out of the room. But if I can't get out of the room, it's okay. Uh, you could just stall the zombies slowly through here with a weapon as this window breaches. And then you can, as white, you can do like a little cut here. So that way you give Eli more time. Um, 
But anyways, that, that's not about that. So basically, he'll still want to put a board on that. I don't know if he did here, but you still want to put that board on the window. You're going to want to come over here. And here he has a clear path. Uh, when you come here as a blue player, you want to pull out the bow. because You can buy the M16, uh, M16 ammo with the bow out. You want to pull out the bow because even if there is two zombies here, you, you just basically want to shoot the bow. There is You have so much bow ammo in this, this strap because of how many max ammo you get that like you can shoot about eight bow shots per round and never run out of ammo. So if there is even more than one zombie, one zombie you could probably navigate through, but if there is even more than one zombie here, you basically just want to shoot bow over here. But since he has a clear path, he just drops down, buys ammo, and then he runs over here and just does like basically one cut is all he needs to do. And then he can start slowly walking up. And and we would be, you know, talking here. I'll tell him when he can come up the stairs. That's I told him right there that he could come up. And then the strat would basically continue as normal. So now I'm just going to leave you guys with the full round of my perspective and his perspective. Um, like I said, we ran this at 21.9, but this was also our first time ever running it together. And I also haven't practiced this in like nine months since I found it. So you could probably get it down to tw low 21 and maybe even 20 SPH with more optimizations. But uh, I definitely feel like this is the best way to play Call of the Dead co-op. Because you, you will be trading so much less with how many kills you're getting. And you will be playing really fast. So uh, that's pretty much it for breaking down the strat. I'm just going to leave you guys with the gameplay. I'll see you guys later.